Hello, everybody, and welcome to my big um, midweek quiz. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on which way you want to look at it, um, this is going to be the last one for a little while because um, the children, some children, some groups of children, we're um, hopeful that we'll be able to get you back into school uh, next week, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. So we've been working really hard um, to make sure school's all nice and clean and, and safe for you and doing lots of work on that. So I mean, it would be so lovely to see, to see um, some of you back because um, we have missed you all um, so much. So I've decided that really, um, because I'll be back in, in my office and doing some things in school, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to carry on to do, uh, doing this every week. But what we will do is we will do one on the Wednesday, the 8th of July. Um, now, I don't know if that would be something we would be able to organise in school or if it would be something um, that we would just do virtually like we've been doing now. But that's definitely something that... Um, I want to do before the end of the term and also um, at Christmas because hopefully, hopefully by Christmas time uh, we, we, we should be allowed to be um, back together again so um, that would be lovely to do in school a lovely Christmas quiz. So Mrs Johnson has given me the usual uh, things, um, things that she wants me to talk about so she'd like you to not to forget to send in your handprints um, with your name and your year group on them so you don't have to be two handprints, it can just be one, that's fine but put your name on it and uh, we're going to have a virtual sports day next Tuesday um, at 12 o'clock. So if you'd like to send in your video clip of you doing a sport, whatever you'd like, um, egg and spoon, if you like, or uh, trampolining or running or something very strange that you can do in your garden during lockdown. Um, and it can be anybody can do it. And grandparents can do it and, and parents and staff. So um, send those in to um, to Mrs Johnson and she's going to have a virtual sports day next Tuesday. She also wanted me uh, to tell you that our Sims, um, the Sims app, um, we're sending out lots more things on that at the moment with them um, getting up and running back into school. So please make sure your Sims app is working because there are some messages coming out on that. And um, the lunch menu for the children is now, um, that'll be returning next week. So that's available for you to book online if your child um, is coming back into school. It, they are just pack-ups um, because um, we're not having no hot, hot lunches, um, but the um, pack-ups are available. So I think that's all the notes, apart from a special one here from Mr Chamberlain. So Mr Chamberlain, who's uh, one of our governors as well, um, he has told us that if we look up into the sky tonight um, towards the southwest at about 10 to 10, so it might be quite late for some of you, but we should be able to see the, the SpaceX rocket, which is carrying the um, astronauts up to the International Space Station. So that'd be quite exciting because if I'm looking out my uh, my uh, doors now into the garden, I can see it's a very clear night. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to see that. OK, then. So our final our final quiz. And don't forget the lovely, lovely prize that there is the cup that will be engraved forever with your name on it. Should you be the winners? Um, so we will get that organized for you. So we've got five rounds as usual. The first one is um, our Olympic round. Now, there are 15 points on offer in that one because um, it's a very tricky one for six points. Then we've got a round on fashion. I know. Uh, the, the pictures is the famous baby pictures round. And then we've got books and authors. And then we've got our usual um, general knowledge round. OK, so here we go with the Olympic round. Because it should have been Olympic year, shouldn't it? But unfortunately, it's not. So question number one. Which country's team walks out first at the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games? So if you see the um, opening ceremony, all the teams from all the different countries come out. Which team walks out first? Question number two. The Olympic torch is lit at which ancient site in Greece? So there's the torch that has um, goes on its own little relay. But it's lit at which ancient site in Greece?
Okay. Question number three. Which is the only city to have held the Summer Olympic Games on three occasions? So there's one city and it's held the uh, Summer Olympics on three different occasions. All right, got that one down. Question number four. In what year were the first modern Olympic Games held? So there was um, a period of time in ancient Greece where they had the ancient Olympic Games and then um, they became a, a sort of a modern thing. In which year were the first modern Olympic Games held? Mrs. Johnson's just telling me that she can hear me, so that's good. Question number five. What is the length of an Olympic sized swimming pool? So if you were in an Olympic pool, it's longer than the one at uh, Whittock, how long in metres would that uh, pool be? Question number six. Right, so which of the following was introduced into the Olympic Games before the other two? So was it the Olympic flame, the podium for medal winners, or electrical timing equipment? So one of those was introduced before the other two. Was it the Olympic flame, the podium for medal winners, or electrical timing equipment. Okay, number seven. So this is going back to the Winter Olympics. So in 1988, the Winter Olympics took place in Calgary and um, there was a great British ski jumper who took part in these games. Quite surprising when you think about it, when you're in Great Britain and you're gonna be a ski jumper. So what was his name? He had a nickname. So what was the nickname of the GB ski jumper who took part in the 1988 Winter Games in Calgary? Right, now this one is the tricky one, okay? Um, so it's thinking back into 2012 at the London Olympics and there was um, a, a Saturday that, that became um, Super Saturday. We, they called it Super Saturday because there were lots of gold medalists from Great Britain. Okay? So I'd like you, if you can, to name our soup, to name the events that the Super Saturday gold medalists, the strong twister, competed in. So there were six different events. It doesn't matter about the names of the people. You might remember some of them. But there were six different events, and we won gold medals in them. So you get a point for each one. I'll just give you a little bit of thinking time on that. Six different events. Okay, we'll move on. So number nine. Torval and Dean, Ice Dance to Victory in 1984 in Sarajevo in the Winter Olympics. To which piece of music? So what was the piece of music called that they um, 
when they won their gold medal. They wore those beautiful purple um, outfits, if you can remember. I am sadly old enough to remember that. Some of you clearly won't be. Um, but they are on the Dancing on Ice programme, aren't they? So maybe you might know it from that. So what was a piece of music? And number 10, in the ancient Olympic Games, so way, way back, a category of people um, were refused to attend or watch the games. So who were they? So which category of people weren't allowed to um, go to the games or watch it? And there's a very good reason for that. Okie dokie. So that's our Olympic round finished. Those tricky questions about the events. And we are going to move on to our fashion round. Love a bit of fashion. So, question number one. Which fashion house designed Kate Middleton's wedding dress? There was a designer at this certain fashion house. So that beautiful dress that Kate wore, who, which fashion house designed that? Okay. Question two. Red soled shoes are the signature of which fashion designer? So this designer has a signature of putting red soles on the bottom of the shoes that they design. Question number three. What do you call the diamond shaped pattern that you often see on um, socks? It's often men's socks. I always think they're like golfing socks. You kind of sometimes almost see it on, the, on a jumper, a golfy jumper. What is that called, that pattern, the diamond shaped pattern? Okay, number four. In the 1990s, which supermodel famously fell over on the catwalk while she was wearing a pair of Vivian Westwood shoes? So which supermodel famously fell over on the catwalk whilst wearing a pair of Vivian Westwood shoes? Again, being old, I can remember that. Some of you, maybe not so much, but she was a very famous supermodel. Question number five. Which street in London is famous for traditional men's bespoke tailoring? So there's a certain street in London that's famous for men's tailoring, men's suits. What's that called? Right, question number six for our younger participants. One natural fabric is wool. So do you know where wool comes from? Question number seven. The four, there's lots of tongue twisters in this round. The four fashion capitals of the 20th century were considered to be Paris, London, New York, and which other missing city? So four fashion capitals. The wind's getting up, it's blowing my, uh, all the leaves across my garden. It's Paris, London, New York, and somewhere else. Where would that be? Question number eight. 
Question number eight. Most genes, most genes, most pairs of genes come with five of what? So most, most pairs of genes that you get come with five of what? Question number nine. Which designer is famous for launching the miniskirt? Ooh, that's a long time ago. That's possibly even before me. It was a very famous lady and she designed the miniskirt. She was famous for launching it. What's her name? And question number 10, the last one in this round. Where does silk come from? So where does silk come from? Okay, that was our fashion round. Right, so now you've got your famous um, baby picture round. So on your sheet, um, and it's in, the, it's in the comments box below, um, there are 10 pictures. Some of them are more obvious than others, I think, because some look they, some people just look exactly as they did uh, now and then. Uh, and some people just look as if you can't tell who they are. So I'll just give you a few minutes on that if you've not if you've not had a look yet. So see if you can write down your um, get the baby pictures. So if Mrs. Johnson can tell me maybe when she's had a look at hers and then I will know when it's time to move on to the next round. I feel number five's not so bad. Or number eight. So, Mrs. Johnson, if you can tell me when you think you have done, and then I will move on to our next round, which is our books and authors round. Mrs. Johnson's not sure about one. She's probably having a little bit of a, um, a debate in her house because I think there's often a debate in the Johnson household. And Mrs. Johnson says one thing and they all go with her and then it's wrong and then Mrs. Johnson gets told. Okay, right, we'll move on then because you can, you can keep looking at that one, can't you? Because you've got that one. So this is our books and authors round. So... Right. Which question number one, which book series uh, first began with the books The Terrible Tudors and The Awful Egyptians? So it was a series of books for children and um, it started with The Terrible Tudors and The Awful Egyptians. OK, question number two. Who wrote these words? By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. So who wrote those words? Uh, 
By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Not who said them, who wrote them. Question number three. What happens to Pinocchio's nose when he tells a lie? What happens to Pinocchio's nose when he tells a lie? Question number four. In which children's book does Mildred Hubble go to Miss Cackle's Academy for Witches? So in which book does Mildred Hubble go to Miss Cackle's Academy for Witches? Question number five. Which fictional detective created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle lived at 221B Baker Street? He was a fictional character. He was a detective and he lived at 221B Baker Street. Right, this is especially for Mr. Skinner, but I've got a feeling he's going to know this one. It's a Dis about a Dis Disney movie, but don't panic. Which popular Disney movie featuring a practically perfect nanny was originally a novel written by P.L. Travers? So which popular Disney movie featuring a practically, a practically perfect nanny was originally a novel written by P.L. Travers? I think Mr. Skinner might know that one. Question number seven. What is the name of the rat in Charlotte's Web? Ooh, tricky. What is the name of the rat in Charlotte's Web? Question number eight. Until he was four years old, James Henry Trotter had a happy life. These are the opening lines of which book? Until he was four years old, James Henry Trotter had a happy life. Which book begins with that opening line? All right, question number nine. What animal could you be described as, would you be described as if you love reading? What might somebody describe you as if you love reading? And the last one in our books and authors round. What sort of business happened at Gringotts? So if you went to Gringotts, what sort of business would you be going into? Okie koki, right, that's the last one on our books and authors round. So the final one of our final quiz for this bit of the lockdown is um, our general knowledge round. So <laughs> I'm not telling you, Mr. Skinner, He's trying to ask me to give him a little clue. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Right. General knowledge, number one. What is the name of the, um, the, the Cluedo character who's red, if you know what I mean. 
So if you're playing Cluedo and you've got the red character, what's their name? I do like a game of Cluedo, to be fair. Question number two. Which of Snow White's seven dwarves didn't have a beard? So which of Snow White's seven dwarves didn't have a beard? You see, for that one, you've got to know the names of the dwarves, haven't you? And then you've just got to guess, unless you really have a good general knowledge of the seven dwarves. Question number three. Compared to an inland location, so if you think about the British Isles, you think about inland and coastal. So what do places coast, sorry, what do places closer to the sea tend to be? So compared to an inland location, if you were closer to the sea, would it be drier, wetter or colder? So compared to inland lo locations, what do places closer to the sea tend to be? Drier, wetter or colder? Question number four. What is a collective noun or what is the collective noun for a group of owls? Collective noun for a group of owls. Question number five. Stevenson's rocket was an early example of which means of transportation? So Stevenson built a rocket. And it was an early example of which means of transportation. Not like the SpaceX rocket, to be fair. Question number six. Now, if my dad's doing this quiz, I'm sure he will know this one. Where did the Bevin boys work? So Bevin boys. Where did they work? They were around in the Second World War. What did they do, Bevan boys? Question number seven. How many teeth in general does an adult have? So if you, you know, that you are expected to have as an adult, on average, how many teeth would you have? Question number eight. What are baby guinea pigs called? Apart from cute, obviously, and fluffy. Or, or maybe they're not fluffy. Maybe I can't, I don't know. But what are the, what would you call them? A baby guinea pig. Question number nine. What is the main ingredient of tarka dal? So that's an Indian dish. So if you were ordering tarka dal, what would the main ingredient be in that? I love tarka dal, love it. One of my favorite things to order if we're having a takeaway. And the last one, uh, question number 10, what is um, what's the word for the fear of heights? 
So if you have a fear of heights, what would that word be? Okay, so that concludes our rounds in this, uh, this quiz. So we can go through. So remember, we have this amazing trophy on offer. Um, and I think Mrs. Johnson said some people have been having another go at some of the rounds because a few people have missed weeks. So everybody's everybody's trying to, everybody's trying to win it. It's it's just true. So um, we'll go through. So don't forget if you want to, um, if you've been playing for, for these, I think this is week nine. Um, so send your scores in to Mrs. Johnson and she'll be able to put them all together and then see a big reveal who um, is the winning team. And we will get that trophy. Um, um, with your name put onto it. And then um, we will just work out how we're actually going to get that trophy to you. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll manage that. that. That will be fine. So we'll go back over the answers. So number one was our Olympic round. So which country's team walks out? Well, that's uh, Greece. Come out first. And the Olympic torch is, um, is lit in, um, at Olympia, the ancient site Olympia. So the city that has hosted the Olympic Games on three separate occasions is London in 1908, 1948, because they didn't need to put these down. This is just extra knowledge because uh, um, that was after the war because there wasn't one in the war. And then we were able to host it after the war. And then, of course, in 2012. Um so number four, in which year were the first modern Olympic Games held? And they were actually held in quite a long time ago, really, even before I was born. And that's in 1896. Pierre de Coubertin brought the modern Olympic Games back um, in 1896, which is quite a long time ago. How long is an Olympic size pool? It's 50 metres long. It's quite a long way to swim, isn't it? And the thing that was introduced before the other two things is um, and the electronic timing equipment. So the electronic timing equipment came before the flame, which is quite surprising, really, because you think that would just be the thing that was there, but it clearly isn't. And the um, the podium for the medal winners, but it was the um, the timing equipment. Well, I suppose when you think about it, they'd need to be—they'd need to know, wouldn't they, winners? So that's yeah, that's that one. Right, the nickname of the GB Olympic uh, ski jumper um, who crazily took part in Calgary was Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Um, so that's him. And then the tricky one. So in the 2012 Olympics in London, we had that Super Saturday, and there were lots and lots of gold medals that were won. Um, some were on the um, track um, athletics, which are probably the easy ones to remember, but there were some others. So you get a point for each one. So if you've got all six of these, you have done extremely well. So the first one that was won was the rowing, the men's four. Because we are good at rowing, aren't we? There was another rowing event that followed that, and that was the women's doubles, double schools. The women won that. Then we went to the velodrome and the team pursuit, um, the women's cycling team pursuit, Danny King, Laura Trott and Joanna Rousel won that. And then on the track, there was the um, women's heptathlon and that was won by Jessica Ennis before she was married. Oh, good knowledge, Mr. Chamberlain. Hitler introduced the flame. Excellent knowledge. Thank you. I didn't know that. Um, so um, Jenica, Jessica Ennis won that. Then there was the long jump, um, Greg Rutherford, and um, he won that. And I can remember sitting down watching it because I love the Olympics. Absolutely love it. It went to 2012, just loved it. And, and I was watching Greg, not at that day because I – we went the next day, anyhow, it doesn't matter. And um, I said to my husband, Greg Rutherford is absolutely rubbish. I watch him time and time again, and he never wins anything. <clears throat> and then he won. So uh, clearly I know nothing at all. And then the final one, of course, was Supermo. And I think Mrs. Uzzle might have been at that 
Superstar today. She maybe was. Um, so, yeah, so they're the ones. So men's four, rowing. Women's schools, rowing. Uh, women's cycling team pursuit, heptathlon, long jump, and the uh, 10,000 metres by Mo. Brilliant. And then number nine. Torvald and Dean dance to um, Ice Victory to the uh, Bolero. And and um, women were not allowed to watch um, um, the Olympic, go to the um, ancient Olympics to attend and watch because often the athletes did it with no clothes. So it was a little bit risky. Um, so women weren't, weren't allowed to, to watch, indeed, or take part. So that's our Olympic round. Mr. Skinner's saying he's got some right. I don't know if he's got all of those six right or if he's... Uh, wrong chat, Mr. Skinner. Could have been worse. Right, fashion. So, which fashion house designed Kate Middleton's wedding dress? Well, it was um, Alexandra McQueen, the fashion house. It was Sarah Burton who actually designed it uh, for Alexandra McQueen. Red soled shoes are the signature of um, Christian Louboutin. And if you've got that diamond pattern on your socks, it's called Argyle, that sort of diamondy, golfy pattern thing. The 1990s supermodel who fell over was uh, Naomi Campbell. And you would be on Savile Row should you wish to go and get a bespoke men's uh, suit. Wool, the natural fabric, is, is coming from a sheep. And the four fashion capitals are were considered to be Paris, London, New York and Milan. Most jeans come with five pockets. And the lady who was famous for launching the miniskirt was Mary Quant. And silk actually comes from um, um, the cocoon, like a little caterpillar of a moth. We often say it's a silk worm, don't we? But it's actually um, a little um, caterpillar thing um, in it, when it's in a cocoon. And it will it will um, come, um, grow into a moth, change into a moth. Okay, so that's our fashion round, and then we've got the famous baby picture round. Okay, so number one is Boris Johnson, and that picture was shown uh, a few weeks ago when his little baby was born. They were comparing his baby to to him. Number two is um, our Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. Number three is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Number four, the one that Mrs. Johnson couldn't get, is actually da, 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 Kim Kardashian. Number five, who looks exactly like him now, as was then, of course, that's Lewis Hamilton. And number six, who again, I think, looks completely just like her, is Adele. Number seven, Cheeky Chappie, is actually um, Robbie Williams. Number eight, again, it looks completely the same now, um, is Richard Hammond. Number nine is Harry Styles. And the final one on that round, um, Cutie, that is actually Holly Willoughby. Okay, so that's our famous picture round. I think number four was quite tricky, wasn't it? I, I found that one tricky. And I knew. Right, number four, books and authors. Lots of children's books on this one. So number one, which book series first began with the books? The Terrible Tudors, and, and they were, of course, the Horrible History series, which we all love. Number two, the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes, and the rest of it was actually, of course, written by William Shakespeare in his um, Macbeth play with the witches. 
Right, what happens to Pinocchio's nose? If he tells a lie, it, of course, gets grows longer. And um, Mildred Hubble went to Miss Cackle's Academy, which is in the book, um, <laughs> um, The Worst Witch. There's lots of people messaging me tonight. It's, sorry, it's very distracting. They've just lost all kind of decorum in the last quiz. Right. Number five. The fictional character was, of course, um, Sherlock Holmes, lived at 221B Baker Street. And the Disney um, a Practically Perfect Nanny was, of course, Mary Poppins. Right. Well, Mrs. J Johnson's telling me that Charlotte Webb was her favourite, so maybe she got this right. And the rat was actually called Templeton. Until he was four years old, James Henry Trotter had a happy life. And then, of course, his parents got um, eaten by a rhinoceros and he ended up with uh, Sponge and Spiker in James and the Giant Peach. That was that book, James and the Giant Peach. And if you um, love reading, you're often described as a bookworm. And the business um that you would do at Gringotts you would um it's a bank it's a wizarding bank from Harry Potter Gringotts right and on to our final round then general knowledge so the red uh, character in the Cluedo is called Miss Scarlet and the only dwarf who doesn't have a beard is Dopey. Places closer to the sea are wetter. And a collective noun for a group of owls is a parliament because maybe they are wise. Number five, Stevenson's rocket was an early example of which means of transportation? That, of course, is um, it was a train. And Bevan boys, they were um, they worked down coal mines and probably there will be Bevan boys around our area because obviously there's lots of mining um, around aren't there, where we live. So um, it was introduced by the war minister, Ernest Bevan, um, and they worked down the mines the coal mines. How many teeth does an adult have? 32 teeth. If they all come through out the back, your wisdom teeth. And guinea pigs are called, baby guinea, baby guinea pigs are called pups. The main ingredient of tarkadal are um, lentils. Yummy, yummy. And if you were suffering from a fear of height, you would have um, acrophobia. Acrophobia. Okay, everybody. Right. So, wow. I wonder whose name is going to go on that trophy. Can't wait to find out. Mrs. Johnson will be um, totaling up everybody's scores um, and doing the um, doing the cumulative um, scoreboard. So we will get those out to you, I'm sure, as soon as possible. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining me every week because it has been lovely you know we started off nine weeks ago when we didn't know what was going to happen and you've been with us and been with us and we've had such lovely lovely comments and it's been so lovely because it just started out as a bit of fun and I'm glad that we've been able to be together and I know you know for some of you 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 won't be able to come back into school um for lots of different reasons and but but you know keep the faith and and we will all get back together I say I will do one um, at the end of July, whether we could actually do it in school or or virtually again. Um, but we will do one to sort of um, finish the term off. And then we will aim to get one actually in school um, if you would like to do that over Christmas time. So thank you so much for playing along with me. It has been lovely to be to be part of you know your Wednesday night routine. Um, but um, school's calling for me. So I do I do need to get back. Um, so send your scores in and we'll announce the winner. OK, so stay safe, be kind and I will see some of you, fingers crossed, um, well, from Monday onwards. OK, so take care. Bye.